What's going on my fellow Belmonts, it's the Mad Belmont here, and today is the start of a new series here on this channel. One that is suited for all of you Castlevania fans out there that may want to know a little bit of history about my history with the Castlevania franchise. I have dubbed this series My Belmont Journey. This is going to be a series of videos chronicling my first experience with every single game in the franchise as of right now. And so I figured, why not start with my proper introduction to the series, which is the first game. That's right, the OG from 1986-87. Yes, it came out in two different years because Japan got it a year before us. So... I'm going to tell you about how I got into the franchise with the original. So, I got into this franchise when I was four years old, okay? And that was back in 1999. I was born in 95. This is 1999 when this, sto when this whole story starts. So, back then, I had three consoles to my name. I had the Nintendo Entertainment System, I had the Super Nintendo, and I had the Nintendo 64. Yes, I was a major Nintendo kid back then, and I still kind of am a major Nintendo adult now, as you can tell by my Switch here. So, I always loved Nintendo and what they put out, so I used to go. Now, I didn't uh, have a whole lot of money to be buying games back then, okay? I was just a little kid, and not to mention, my family has not been the best off when it comes to finances, okay? We have, we have struggled a lot over the years, so... One way that I knew I could play a bunch of games was to do some chores around the house, do some chores for my family members, save up some renting money, okay? Because, yes, I did used to go and rent games at rental stores. Yes, I remember when those were a thing. Yes, I am old to the younger generation that may be watching this. You do not have to remind me, okay? But anyway, moving on. So... I used to go and I used to rent games. That was how I got into a lot of games back then, is I would go and I would rent it, and if I liked it enough based off of the rentals, then I would go and buy it. I would try and go and buy it afterwards. So this story in particular starts on a very hot summer day. Okay, me and my dad decided to go because I had saved up enough money for a couple rentals and I was looking for new games to play. So we decided to go and he had some errands to run anyway. So it really was a perfect set of circumstances. So I went and I went into the store and the way that I would kind of experiment with games back then was I would just walk in there and if a box art captivated me enough that was the game I went with that is how I got into the Final Fantasy series well you know how I got into the Final Fantasy series if you saw my Square Enix video which you can see if you click the card right up there okay but that's how I got into the Final Fantasy series which was with six and uh, I got into Chrono Trigger the same way, which is if a box art was uh, really good and really captivated me, I was gonna go with it. And I remember going to the NES section and I was just looking for anything, anything interesting. So I'm scanning the shelves and in the middle of the middle shelf was this right over here, this box art right on over here. And I remember just, my eyes were just glued onto it. I could not take my eyes off of it. I wanted to just reach out and grab it, and I did. And I checked the front, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, you got this guy standing in front of this castle with this creepy-looking vampire. You know, that I didn't know it was Dracula at that point. Again, I was only four years old. But I saw this vampire on the box art, and then I go and I flip the thing around and I flip it to the back and oh man seeing those screenshots and just fantasizing about what this game was going to be like I was in I was in and I noticed that this was the first game in the series so I decided you know what this has to be a series right I had you know I have to not just get this I have to get more so I did get 
two more Castlevania games, and I will go into those whenever I get to those respective games, but we're just talking about CV1 right now. So, I grabbed CV1 and I grabbed the other two CV games that I had rented back then, and then I walk up to the counter, pay my money. Now, for a rental back then, it was $3 for three nights if you got, you know, I think it was like, what, three games or less was $3. If you got more than that, it was $5. So, I got, I was right on that three game threshold. Okay, well, it applied to both games and movies. So, I was right on that three-game threshold. So, it was $3 for three nights. Got it on a Friday. And I remember, now, the way it worked at this rental store, it was called Movies to Go. The way it worked here was the boxes themselves would be on the shelf. You go, you get it off the shelf, you take the box there, you take your money, you put the money down. Then they would give you the game in a generic plastic clamshell case okay now they would just give you the game if that's what you wanted to do but if you wanted to read the manual like I always used to you had to tell them hey put a manual in there you know put the manual in there if you've got it and most of the time back then they did have the manuals you know we didn't have uh, degenerates around here that would steal manuals like Apparently, a lot of uh, people in the retro gaming community have said, I did, I never experienced any of that. But anyway, so they would put the manuals in the plastic cases, you know, the clamshell cases, if you specifically requested it, which I always did. So I get my three games in their respective cases with the manuals, and I walk on out of that store, and I remember, because we had to do his errands after I went and rented the games, which was a pretty common thing back then for me and my dad to do, which was he decided to get me out of the way first because he knew if he didn't, I was going to be bugging him the whole time so that we could go to the store. So he decided to get me out of the way and I would specifically get those manuals just to hold me over until we got to the house. So while we're off doing his errands or whatever I'm sitting there in the car or if I did walk into the store with them I'd walk into the store and just be reading the manuals you know looking at the pictures and looking at the controls and how the game works and you know reading the story and all that type of stuff I did all of that because I was an avid reader at the time okay did I understand what was going on in these manuals and books and stuff like that half the time? No, I didn't. Okay, I was four years old, but I did love just reading, even though I didn't understand it, and looking at the pictures and thinking, oh, that's cool, that's cool. You know, looking at the screenshots that were in the manual and stuff like that, and I was like, oh, that's cool, you know? And then, because you see these pictures in the manual and you start just fantasizing about oh my god this is what it's gonna be like when i get into this game and so i'll never forget it going home and the second the car stopped i got out of the car and i sprinted i did not jog i did not run i sprinted from the car to my room which had all my consoles in it and this was a time and a place where, you know, technology was a little bit more durable than what it is now. And I say that because I ran in there so fucking fast that I ended up accidentally tripping over one of my uh, other consoles. I think I tripped over my poor N64 that was right next to the... Uh, right next to the door where my room was and uh yeah i gave it a i gave it a good booting but you know what still works to this day still works to this day but anyway so i run on in there i get my nes game out i get the first game out because my dad always taught me son if you're playing a game or watching a movie or anything like that that's a series which was multiple movies or multiple games or whatever. You have to experience everything in order. From the first game 
onward. You cannot just jump straight to whatever the latest game or whatever the latest movie or anything like that is in a franchise. He said, you have to go through the evolution of that game or of that movie franchise. Okay, this is the most uh, beneficial way, he said, that you can experience these things. Okay, because if you go to a later game in the franchise and then you go back to a one that came out before it, then that later game is going to ruin that first game for you. So pretty good, pretty good thinking on his part. Th th that man, he was sneaky smart. He had smarts up here. Okay, my dad did. And so I'll never forget it. I popped that cartridge in. Okay, and from the moment that I saw this right here, I was hooked for life. I knew that this was going to be a series that I was definitely going to make myself more familiar with and that I wanted more of because that music, Simon at the time, who again, I did not know his name, okay, until I read the manual, but now I did know him as Simon Belmont. So seeing Simon walk up to that castle gate with the music playing and with the castle and the moon in the background and the bats flying towards the castle like that whole visual that sold me okay and then i actually get into the game and it sold me even more the fast fluid combat you, you know using the whip on the zombies and the bats and the merman and fighting that big bat boss in the first level like that even though i was absolutely getting my ass kicked by this game and by the other two games that were uh that i just so happened to rent which i'll get more to those more whenever i get to those games but even though i was getting my ass kicked by castlevania 1 i was having a blast going through and listening to that music man it i wish i could have that feeling again you know that feeling of playing that game for the first time but i never will Okay, I never will. I will never have that magic ever again. And if you are out there and if you are watching this video and you have not played these games, please do yourself a favor. Go and play them. Go play the first game. Okay, you can do it right here in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Okay, you can do it right here on modern platforms. It is on PlayStation 4, as you can see right here by my physical copy of it. It's on the Switch. I do have it on here. And it is on Xbox as well as PC. It's on all modern platforms. So you have no excuse to not play this game. And all the other games that are in here. There are eight total games in here. So yeah, please be good, sure to go do that. But anyway, so after that, I definitely became hooked on this franchise. And I played more of it over that weekend and I played more of the other two games over that weekend and I eventually kept renting Castlevania 1 over and over and over again until I finally beat the game and I'll never forget killing Dracula and seeing that castle just crumble at the end like that to me is more than enough for you know an ending to a game you know it's simple, it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point, and it has enough of an impact. When you go through all the struggles that I did with that game, because that was before this lovely collection included a thing called save states, so if you die, you get fucked royally, okay? And I had to overcome the game, so I had to get better. I had no choice but to get better at this game in order to be able to beat it. Now, modern gamers, you guys have the luxury of being able to use save states so that you can keep your lovely, you know, full level whip, you know, but yeah, I I'll never forget all the fond memories that I have with the original Castlevania and with all the games in the franchise going forward, and it wouldn't have started without the original Castlevania, so thank you so much, Konami, thank you so much for not only making this game, but continuing it into a franchise because I don't know where I'd be 
right now as a gamer if it wasn't for the Castlevania franchise. So that is the story of how I got introduced to the series. How did you get introduced to the series? I want to know. I want to know. If you have played this series before, I want to know how you got introduced to it. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to discuss that with you. And also, if you are new to the franchise, if you haven't played any of these games before, I want to know what has stopped you from getting into the franchise. Is it the lack of accessibility? Is it the fact that the games are hard? Because let, let's be honest with ourselves here, these games are fucking hard. Is it that? Is it the lack of accessibility? What is it? Let me know down in the comments below. So that is going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like on it. It'll really help me out a lot. Also, if you want to chat with me and other members of my team, the Radical Losers, Please be sure to go follow the uh, Radical Family Discord. We have a link down right here in the description of the videos. Okay, it's in every single video. And if you go there, you will get to meet me and my fellow Radical Losers and the members of our community. We are very active in there. We have a lot of different chats in there about a bunch of different topics. And also, there is a section for us Vaniacs out there, us Metroid Vaniacs out there, you know, that uh, I'm pretty active in, uh, I must say. And so, if you want to come in there and you want to chat with me and my fellow Radical Losers, go to the link down in here. Okay. Also, if you are new around here, make sure you subscribe because I do discussion videos like this. I do reviews on Castlevania and all things gaming. I do videos at least once a week. Okay, so remember, have fun and hot, my fellow Belmonts. I'll see you in the next video and peace out.